this next tutorial, we will create an object like this, a shade lounge sort of uh, piece of furniture, which you often find in people's living rooms. Okay. So open up new design, choose the vertical plane, and we will draw the base piece of this sofa. And we're going to make it say 1600 long. Again, you des decide the sizes of each piece based on your design. I'm going to extrude this. So, pretty basic to start off with. I'm going to make it a width of about 800. Usually, these sort of pieces of furniture are quite wide, maybe even wider, but I'm going to do mine to 800. Uh, before I move on to the next bit, I'm going to use the fillet tool. And I'm going to basically select all the edges. And I'm going to round them all off to the same radius, something like 40. Maybe even a bit bigger. Again, depends on your design. Some some parts have larger fillets on the edges or rounded off edges, and some have smaller. So again, let's just keep it 40. Then what I'm going to do now is the bit which sits on top. So again, make a new sketch, same work plane, and using the same reference points, sits on top. You can make this one slightly bigger. Sometimes the base is smaller, sometimes it's bigger. Again, it depends on your design. I'm just going to make it the same size. Okay. So make sure it's aligned with the bottom piece. Again, do exactly the same. Just extrude it. So this sort of These sort of uh, designs are quite simple, but you can add a lot more complexity to it as you go along. So again, fill it tool. There's different ways of adding the fill. I believe this works. You can just select on the faces. Um, do the same, 40. No, not let me do it. So let's just re-select. Come out of that. Again, it depends on the software software you're in. Some will just let you select the face or select the whole object. Some won't. So again, it just needs for you to experiment and find out what works best on the software. And down to 40. Interesting. Ah, uh, I know what I've done wrong. <clears throat> right, so on the second feature, what I didn't do, if I go down here, you get a sub-menu. I don't think you can see it because it's off the screen. But if you go down to Edit Features, so right-click on the features, which will appear down here. So the last feature, right-click on it, and get Edit Feature, click on that, and go back to it. I didn't want to join this. I wanted to make it its own new body. All right, so that shows you how to edit previous features. At any point, you can just right click and rechange the feature which you created. So I should have up here one body and two bodies. All right, it's important to do that for this product. So now I fill it. And this should now work. So by me making mistakes, hopefully you're learning how to correct your own mistakes. Because these are common mistakes which happen all the time. See, 40, click OK. All right. Same again, same work plane. And I'm going to draw the back piece. So to do this, I'm going to create a rectangle from the same starting point up to the same height. 
about here, the same thickness at the bottom, so 400 high, and let's press the tab button and enter 200 at the base. Or I suppose I could make this back breast piece slightly narrower. And what I shall do now, I'm going to draw like a slant from that up here. It's going to slightly curve back. Uh, so I'm going to use the arc tool, three punt arc. So I'm going to draw from here. I'm going to bring it back. I could put in the height I want, say 350. Looks about right. And click once and you get this curve. And you can control that curve. And that looks right to me. And do the same from here. With the curve, sorry. Yeah, let's just check. Still on the same tool. From here, this time I'm going to go up to the same height as this. So remember, go over to the point and draw it. You can see the guidelines. I'm not going to go as far away. I want to come closer to it. So something like that. And that's you fine. I'm going to just flatten off the top like that for now. I don't need this anymore, so use the trim tool. So that's the shape at the back. And let's finish that sketch and extrude it. So extrude it to the same thickness, which was 800. Yeah. And again, don't forget, new body. Every time, new body, so you're making new bodies for each part of this chaise lounge or sofa, whatever you want to call it. So fill it, and I'm going to fill it all the edges again, the same fill it. Even the bottom. And just put in the same. And it's not working this time. Try slightly smaller. Yeah. Sometimes it doesn't let you do it because it's too big for the shape you have. Let's just try and make it a little bit bigger. 30. Yep, yeah, that works. Let's leave it at that. Click OK. And there you go. Also, this could be a bed like shape as well, but you're doing chairs or sofas and so on. Uh, right, let's just add something in at the back, like a backrest which sits here so people don't fall off the back so they lean against it in the corner. As you've seen in the example, like that. So click on the sketch and I'm going to go around the back here and we shall first of all draw the length you want. So let's start it, it will start somewhere down here. We'll draw it up to here, say 1350. Maybe a bit too long. Let's bring it back to 1200 and go up. So it's just below where it starts to curve away, about here, 360 high. Okay. Uh, the back here, I will draw a line up again, 400. So it's level with this. Now I want it to have the same curve as this. All right, so what we can use here, instead of trying to get the same, we can just go to create and project include, project, I'm sorry, project include on the project tool, and click on this edge. And you will see it's created this, you can see it, it's pinky purpley color line. So it's projected that edge onto this sketch. Which you can now use. I don't want it to be as high, but so what I'm going to do now. So I select that, that projection, that edge, and I'm going to use the spline tool. I'm going to try to use the spline tool here, and I'm going to just come out at an angle and then start bending it. And probably needs to be a little bit higher than that. So let's just do it again. Let's start over here actually. So I'm going to be starting about this height. Come out in a slight and then gradually just click and click and click. Yeah, let's just accept that for now and show you what you can do. So it's not quite a very smooth, continuous, it's a bit bumpy, looking at something to correct me. So if we skip, what I can do is I can move these edges back down maybe. 
and create something which looks maybe a little bit better. Doesn't look quite right to me still. Try to get that going straighter down it here so it meets this better. Or you could leave it like that. Just doesn't look right to me, but it's going to be a little bit long as well. Push this down. Bring this up a little bit. Okay, this shows you what you can do afterwards just by manipulating these. Okay, you can go for something wackier like that. Tell you what, let's just do something like this. Uh, then what we need to do is extrude and select this and let's extrude it be not quite as thick as the other pieces the back piece is usually thinner so 150 maybe and let's make a new body that's gone the wrong way so we need to go minus 150 yeah, it's too thick so let's make them less yeah, you might even be able to do it less. Again, you decide the sizes you want. <clears throat> Doesn't look too bad from here. Bit of an unusual shape, but you can always go back in <clears throat> and edit the sketch. So under here, under sketches, you have all your sketches you've drawn. Edit the sketch, and I'll bring you back. And again, you can make small changes here again if you don't like it. Yeah, bring this lower down maybe. You know, just experiment here. Update it, finish the sketch, and you will find it will automatically update for you. Yeah, it's not particularly, it doesn't look too bad, I suppose. So now fill it. Same as before. We want to fill it all the edges. Go to the bottom, don't forget the bottom. Even the bottom and these sort of pieces of furniture have round off edges. And let's try 30 and see what happens. Yep, looks good to me. Let's look here. And there you go. <clears throat> Starting to get the idea of how you create. So you can create your own. You can have multiple parts. You don't have to have one big piece here. It could be several cushions put together. Yeah, you create your own design. Just by all means, use this tutorial to learn, but then you create your own. Your final solution cannot be identical to mine. Uh, right, so let's think about feet. Most of these sort of bits of furniture have feet to sit on feet. Lots of ways of doing this. Um, this I think is slightly more complicated because at the moment this is a pretty basic. It's just extrusions and fillets. Um, there's not a level. There's not really much complexity to making a shape like this. So let's try and use a few other tools to create a uh, feet which will expand the complexity of your design if you're using these sort of tools. So what I'm going to do, I want to create a, I go back to my design, I want to create feet like this. Okay, so I'm going to create first of all a shape which I can revolve in a position underneath to create something like that and then I'm going to use the pattern tool to create more feet, to add more support underneath. So to do that, I need to have a plane here which I can draw onto, which is at 90 degrees. So what I need to do, what I would do is select the bottom of this. I'm going to draw a sketch, try and find it in the middle. I'm going to draw a line here. And then just right click on that and make a construction line. It's just a guidance line. I could while I'm here just for future, which you'll see. Just see, it's hard to see what I'm doing. Draw a straight line out. Can't see the line. Let's go back. <clears throat> Find the middle, draw the line. And again, just leave that line there for later for a reference point when you're making a pattern. So, two construction lines like that. Now I need to create a new work plane so I can draw onto here. So to do that, I need to finish the sketch, which I just created. Go to construct and plane at angle. 
I don't want that line actually for this. Well, that's because I could draw it. No, we'll do it on the other one. So let's just select that line and construct plane at angle. Don't want it lying flat like that. I want it sitting at 90 degrees down through the middle of this. So let's change the angle to 90 degrees. So I have a plane here which I can now draw onto. Click OK. Then use sketch tool and we're sketching onto this plane. So let's see where I am. Some underneath. So I'm going to draw the profile or half a profile of the, the leg or the feet. So we'll draw a line straight down. Choose where you want to be. Choose the height. Let's say 150. I'm going to draw a line in at the top. Say 50. You could make a very simple leg, just something like that. And then revolve. So we'll finish that sketch. So you can see what I'm doing. Then click on the revolve tool. You want to select the profile, which is this. Then you want to select the axis, which is this back one. So you could create simple feet like that. I'm going to make something a little bit different. So I'm just going to go back. So just Control Z. It's a great thing about this software. Just Control Z or Command Z or Mac. You can go back a little bit. And then let's draw a base piece. Say 30. And what I'm going to do is use something like the spline tool again. Just experiment with that. I'm going to go in and I'm going to go out. Create a slightly more organic shape of foot. I use the sketch and again revolve, select the profile and select the axis. And again, this makes us a new body again. Click OK. A little bit stumpy looking, but you get the idea. All right. So I've created one. So I want to create more across the bottom of the actual uh, sofa. So to do that, you can obviously draw them all separately, that would take a long time, but there's another tool called the Pattern Tool and Rectangular Pattern is what you're going to use in this case. So Rectangular Pattern, let's move it out of the way so we can see what I'm doing. Let's click on the bottom so I can see, so we've got this feature. So Pattern Type, you want Feature, or it could be Body I suppose, we've made it a body. So we could click on Bodies and choose the last body, so we've got one body selected. You want to then select the directions you want to go. So this is why I created these lines as well. So I click on here and click on there. That's the two directions we're going to move in. So we want three that way and we want three this way. So that's correct. Quantity three and three and then we have to decide the distance. You should do the maps here and work it out. I'm just going to do a bit of guess working. I'm just going to visualize it. And so let's say distance. I want it to be sort of in the same place over here. I should really have measured from here to here, which I could go back and do, but you can work it out with a little bit more accuracy. So let's say that was your let's say 600, see what happens. Yeah, a bit too far. Bring it back to 550. That doesn't look too bad. That distance from here to here is probably a little bit less. That's okay. Again, you can do the math, work it out before you do this. You know the distance between here to here, you know the same, it's in the same place from here to the edge. That's from here to the edge. So that takes a little bit more maths to do it accurately. And that's the sort of things we would be checking at the end to see that sort of more accurate way of working. Even more accurate in the way I'm working here myself. So quantum time I'm going to go this way. So distance is slightly longer. So probably 1400. Oh, too much. And you can see where it's laying it down. I want that to be a little bit further. Say 450. Even a bit further, what's 1500? Okay, yeah, that's probably about right. Okay, and that's it. When you click OK, you should have six feet, and that's it. Other things you can do, you can even add little details like the lots of cushions they have, like beading which runs around where the two bits of material are joined, and so on. So, we could look at using the sweep tool for something like that. 
So again, what we have to do is we need to create, I'm going to create a beading between here along this edge. All right. So this would be a piece of fabric which would join another piece of fabric here. So we're going to use the sweep and we're going to sweep it around the outside of this to make it look a bit more authentic and real. So to do that, we have to create, first of all, another new work plane. So construct offset plane. We select the top of this. We have to move this plane down so it's sitting just on the edge of this fillet here. So that fillet, I believe, was 30 or 40. Let's see what happens when I type in minus 40. Let's just check. I believe that was the right place. Maybe not. No, it's a bit low. I think it was 30, actually. No, maybe it was 40. Yeah, actually, sorry, that is right. 40 is right. Click OK. All right. So we have this for pin now. What we're going to do is we're going to create a path around the edge of this, around the outside. So we can create a sweep around that path. So this would be a perfect rectangle. So all we need to do is sketch onto this another rectangle. Like that. Okay. What we also need to do is the edges, so we need to round those off to be the same. So that's not the same, it was 40. So it should look exactly the same. Again, this is just adding a bit more complexity to your design so it looks more authentic and more realistic. And you could get really detailed, you could have interior parts, you build the frame first and add the cushions to it and so on like a real sofa. But that's pretty complex for the time we have to do this. And I think that's right. So finish the sketch. You've now got that sketch. This is your path. Now what we need to do is create another um, work plane which starts in the middle of this line, in the middle. So this makes sense in a minute. So this time I'm going to choose mid plane just to show you how you can use these. Mid plane, select that surface, select that surface and you see it creates another work plane in the middle between these two planes. Click OK. I'm going to choose sketch tool. I'm going to zoom in that so I can see what I'm doing. I'm going to draw a small circle right on the edge of this, like this. Let's make it 6mm or 5mm. Quite small. Usually, if you look closely at fabric on sofas and the way it's joined, you will see little sort of seams like this running around where the materials haven't met, just to make it look a bit more attractive, I suppose. Again, in some you wouldn't see this, but this just adds a level of complexity to your design. You're using more skills here, which is what we want to see you doing. Uh, I think that's it. Oh yes, what I'll do actually. I'm actually going to zoom in here and I'm going to create it, another one down here. On the same point. I say five or six, I can't remember. Five. No, six goes. Uh, same here at the top here of this line where it just starts to curve and the same is moved down. You'll see why I'm doing this in a minute. It will make sense once you see the result. All right. So I've drawn these four little circles on the edge of these. And I've drawn this around the edge of the ship. Or not. This obviously is at 90 degrees. So this was drawn on this work plane that way. And these are drawn on work planes by sex. This first work plane at 90 degrees. A little bit hard to get your head around that. But you should be able to visualize it there, hopefully. Finish the sketch. Now what we're going to do is sweep this. So we're going to sweep and the sweep dialog box asks you to choose a profile. 
you have this profile, you also have this one and this one. So you can see here it tells you you've selected four and they should all be highlighted in blue. The path, click on it, and this is the path. This is the first drawing you created. So click on this path and you'll see it's automatically created. You don't want cut, you want to join. Not new body this time, you just want to join this to these other parts to join it. And click OK. And you see what's done? Okay. You see things like that on fabric and leather, the way they're joined on the edges of large cushions or large parts of sofas or chaise lounge, just like this. Right. You could have a go at doing the same here, a little more complex, but it can be done, even on the, these. Yeah. Again, you're going to have a go yourself at doing things like that. So that's it. Last thing to do is add some colour again. So press A on the keyboard. You should have a dialog box that appears like this, appearance. I'm going to scroll down and you have leather and cloth. Again, have a look through, experiment. I just like these reds. So I'm just going to clop it. You see, click and drag the red onto it. That's it. Um, the feet haven't been done, so I'm going to choose another material. I'm going to choose some, like real glossy brass metal metallic color. So I have several of the metals. Paint. Metals. Metals. Let's try bronze or brass. Let's have a look. You want the polished ones, they often look the best. And then just drag it across onto all the feet. Make sure you're selecting the right object. There you go. Other little things you could do if you go back down to the fabric. Where's the fabric? Too many windows open. It's harder to see what you're doing if you keep everything open. So it's closing. Here's the fabric. Let's see if there's a white. Is there a white? No, there's no white. Ah, there it is. White leather. I did use the fabric last time. Let's see what it looks like. So what I'm going to do here is click faces. I'm going to zoom in, might be a bit tricky to do, there's a lot of faces here. And let's just drag it across, and no, it's not working for some reason. Ah, sorry, you can see here, this little drop down icon, basically me, I'll try this little download icon, it means you need to download it, so click on it, and it should download from the Fusion database. Okay, now I try. Yeah. Okay, so we can actually change some of the faces like that beating. You can make that white if you wanted to. Sometimes you have to zoom in quite small pieces, obviously. And this is a personal choice. Just again add some sort of feature to. The design of the sofa. Can't get that. You need to zoom in sometimes to see what you're trying to. There you go. There's other ways of doing this actually, but I'll leave that for another tutorial. Small movements. As I said, it's easier if you roll it in to be able to select the correct areas. Right, so you can carry on this sort of principle. See what happens when you do things like this. Just change the back piece. So it's a different color. Okay, so you can just change the final presentation of your. Let's just try something here. They have made these into bodies. Okay, so these are different bodies. Let's go back. Where's that? Let's press 
Cross Care again. Put that back. That's the first body. Body 5. No, that's all one body, which it shouldn't be. Don't know why that has happened. Let's just leave it. Again, you can experiment, trying to add color in. Yeah, like I've shown you here. All right. So again, please remember, you need to be developing your own designs. Yeah, this is to help you, to watch, to guide you, and have a go at doing it, but then you have to develop your own chair design. Okay, thank you.